So in this latest video looking at algebra we'll be focusing on substitution which includes substituting values into expressions and formulae. So in algebra we replace numbers that can change with letters which is more algebraically known as variables. So in expressions or in formulas we substitute these letters or variables with given values to calculate the answer. Now before we get started it's really important that you're able to read expressions and terms for what they actually are. So here, if we have a look at the first one, so here we've got b squared. Now b squared basically means b times b. 4b, where there's no symbol in between both the number or the letter or letter and letter, it just basically means that they are multiplying because one of the key rules of algebra is that we don't use the multiplication symbol. Instead, we just merge the two things together with numbers coming first and letters preferably in alphabetical order. So if you can't see any mathematical symbol in between letters or numbers, then it's fair to assume that you are going to be multiplying those two things together, which kind of links us nicely into AB, which basically means A times B. 3AB means 3 times A times B. 3A squared. Now this one's always a little bit of a challenge one because what it is, you've got to remember bid mass. So we don't read or calculate expressions from left to right. We've got to use bid mass to work out what it is. Now basically what this is, is it's 3 times A squared. So what you've got to do is you've got to do the A squared first. It's completely disconnected to the 3. And then once you've worked out the value of A squared, that is when you then multiply it by 3. So here what we need to do is for... So let's just make a little quick note of that. So here we need to square a first before multiplying by 3. Now with a and then bc in brackets, again we need to use bid mass. So what we need to do is work out the bracket first. So that's what we need to do. So the last thing we're going to do here is multiply by a. So what this is going to be, it's going to be a times, and then I need to do b plus c. For this one here, again, the third rule of algebra is that we don't use division symbol. Instead, we write things as a fraction. So basically, when you've got a over b, that is the same as a divided by b. Likewise, we've got this next one here. I've got to do a times b over c. Or we can write it as a times b in brackets divided by c but personally I would ditch that and just go for the fraction version and then finally for this one here we've got a b squared now we see what this means it means a times b all squared so what I've got to do is I've got to do a times b first and then square the answer So before we move on to substitution, it's really, really important that you are able to establish what the difference is and what expect these expressions actually mean before we start replacing them with numbers. Now, a good tip when substituting correctly is to put brackets around terms that contain a combination of more than one letter and then working these out separately before finally calculating an answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a brief bubble around that tip. And then, so let's have a look at an example question. So here we've got that A has th is the value of 3, B is 6, and C is 5. And what we need to do is we need to work out the value of each of these expressions. So here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to substitute. Now here we've just got single A, so what I'm going to do is swap A with its value, which is 3. So this is going to be 10 plus 3, which gives me an answer of 13. Here, now when I was talking about putting brackets around it, I'm just going to put brackets around 2C because it's a combination of more than one letter. And basically what this therefore means is, well, let's just get rid of the an arrow properly. So here I've got A, which is 3 plus, and then bracket, it's going to be 2 times C, which is 6. So here I've got 3 plus 12, which equals 15. Then moving on to question three, I'll try these doing in different colours so it stands out a little bit more. So again, I'm going to put brackets around, well I don't need to put brackets around because I've only got one term. So here I've got five times A, which is three, times B, which is six. And if I work that out, I've got five times three, which is 15, times six, which is 90. Then moving on to our next one. So again, I'm going to put brackets around 
these terms. So here I've got c squared, which is 5 squared, minus, and I'm going to put brackets, 2 times 6. So here I've got 5 squared, which is 25, minus 2 times 6, which is 12, giving me a final answer, 13. And moving on to question 5 here, I've got a times, and again, if I put brackets around the 2c, got a bracket b, or well, let's replace the number because that's done. So here I've got a, which is 3, times, and then I've got b, which is 6, plus, and then bracket, 2 times c, which is 5. So doing this bit here, first I've got 10 plus 6, which is in the bracket, which I've got 3 times 16, which gives me a final answer, 28. And then moving on to question 6, here I'm just going to put brackets around these, I've got 3 times, and it's going to be 6 squared, minus 3 times 5. Now, if I then work out the value of 3 times 6 squared, which is 3 times 36, it gives me an answer of 108 minus 15. And 108 take away 15 gives me a final answer. Then moving on to question 7. Here. Again, I'm going to put brackets around the 2ab. Then you put a bracket around the c because it's just a single letter. So here I've got 2 times 3 times 6 minus 5. So 2 times 3 is 6, times 6 is 36, minus the 5 gives me a final answer, 51. And then finally, moving on to question 8, I've got 2ac. So this is going to be 2 times 3 times 6, or no, times 5 rather. Most important you read the question carefully times 5 and that is all being divided by b which is 6 so working these out I've got 2 times 3 which is 6 times 5 which is 30 over 6 now you can see here I've not written the division symbol because I don't want to get confused it's easy if I just keep things as a fraction and then 30 divided by 6 gives me the final answer let's have a look at some other questions now once you start mastering that, where the next level start leads into is looking at multiple powers, starts introducing square roots and maybe fractions. And obviously there, look as you can see from our substituting values, also includes negative numbers. So again, depending on what level you're working at, expect these types of things. So to make questions more difficult, all you need to do is stick negative numbers in there, stick fractions in there, potentially stick square roots in there, decimals, etc. Which is all just it's the exact same method just using more complicated numbers. So let's have a look at these particular questions. So with number one, I've got y times t. So no need for brackets because they're just single letters. So here I've got minus four, minus, minus three. Now again, with negative numbers, two minuses in the middle turn into a plus. So I've got minus four plus three leaves me with an answer of minus one. Then with question two, I've got x squared, so that's going to be 10 squared. Now what I am going to do is put these in brackets, only because it's going to involve negative numbers. So here I've got 10 squared plus minus 4 squared. And what I'm going to do here is also just going to... Now one thing you do need to be careful of is using your calculators when it comes to squaring negative numbers. Now if you are going to use a calculator to do these questions, make sure you're putting negative numbers inside brackets before you square it. I don't. Uh, the calculators tend to work on bid mass and they do the squaring bit first before they do a negative, which obviously is incorrect. So it's always good to use your common sense. And there we go. So here I've got 10 squared, which is 100. I've got minus four times minus four. A negative times a negative gives me a positive 16. And here I've got minus three times minus three times minus three. Well, if I do these two ones first, I get nine times minus three, which leaves me with minus 27. So working this out, I've got 100 plus 16 minus 27, leaves me with the answer of 89. And then find, uh, with moving on to question three, so here I've got the square root, and again, I've got three multiplied by minus three, multiplied by minus 4. So working this out, and again I'm not going to go into a calculator, I'm going to put this in brackets, 
So here I've got 3 times minus 3 is minus 9. So I've got minus 9 multiplied by minus 4. 4 times uh, 9 is 36. And two negatives make a positive. So this then becomes root 36, which gives me an answer 6. So then moving on to question 4. So if again, if I just get a bit, a bit of space, so which hasn't leaked. much of this out so moving on to question four I've got again I'm going to put brackets around these two terms that I've got so I've got a half times 10 plus 2 times minus 4 so working this out I've got half times 10 which is 5 plus 2 times minus 4 which is minus 8 now again I've got a plus and a minus in the middle so the signs are different so it becomes a minus leaving me with a final answer is 3. Now moving on to a more complicated question. So here what we've got is we've got not only have we got more complicated formula, we've also got some quite long nasty decimal numbers that we then need to substitute in. Now the key thing with regards to this question it does say giving your answers to correct to one decimal place and this is the formula that I need to substitute in. So with question A what I've got is I've got v equals and I've got my square root. Now again what I'm going to do is I'm going to put brackets around the two terms. So I've got u squared so it's 2.4 squared plus and then 2 times 3.2 times 5.25. Now this will inevitably be a calculator paper uh, question so what I would strongly recommend is that you could simplify and work out the values of each bracket or depending on how confident you are with working with calculators, I would actually type in all of this into your calculator. Now, if you do that correctly, and it should look exactly what it looks like on the screen. Again, if you're not too sure, use brackets, like in the exact same place as what I've done where I've put them. And this usually works best when you've got decimal numbers. And that gives me an answer of 6.2737. 54857. Now we want to round this number up to one decimal place. So that's going to give me V equals 6.3 to one decimal place. So moving on to question B. So again, here we're dealing with negative numbers. So I've got V equals. And again, I'm going to put brackets around these. So I've got 9.1 squared plus 2 times minus 4.7 times 3.04 and again I'm going to type all of this in as it's in exact form on the calculator so I get v equals 9 point squared plus 2 times 4.7 times 3.04 and I get an answer of 7.364377 now rounding this number up to one decimal place gives me 7 to 1 D. Another thing to bear in mind is that when you are entering negative numbers, make sure you're not using the subtraction button. Make sure you're using the negative button on your calculator or depending on your calculator, you might have a button that looks like a plus minus. So never use the subtraction key um, in, for when you're representing negative numbers. Always use either your negative number button or your plus minus depending on make of your calculator. Now I will put some practice questions along with their answers in the description below for you to practice this topic.